Slide, the third single from Clancy, has finally been released, with the pilot showing no mercy for our emotions for a second time this era. Amongst the music videos and lyrics rich with symbolism and metaphors, Backslide aids in this exploration of yet another internal struggle by revealing to us a familiar face that hasn't been seen for a while. As per usual, I'm going to give my thoughts on the single. I rate Backslide a 7 out of 10. It's not my favourite single from Clancy and it did take a few listens for it to grow on me, but the melody in the chorus is amazing and I love the callbacks to Stressed Out. As stated in the introduction, Backslide follows the same pattern seen in Next Semester of exploring a specific struggle in a non-law related manner. Although, as I have always stated as a disclaimer, these songs can have multiple interpretations. Unlike Next Semester, however, Backslide utilises a lot of metaphors and symbolism within the lyrics, rather than structural techniques, making the meaning more obscure. This metaphorical and symbolic language also presents us with something new lyrically this era. Unlike Overcompensate's bluntness in regards to rebellion and Next Semester's open discussion of anxiety, Backslide is not clear in what it wishes to discuss. This song seemingly explores being overwhelmed by one's insecurities. Instead of starting at the beginning of the song, I'm actually going to focus on the chorus first with good reason. Backslide features what is known as both a semantic field and an extended metaphor. A semantic field is a group of related words that illustrate a certain theme or idea, whereas an extended metaphor is a metaphor that is continued for a specific thing throughout a piece of literature. The chorus talks a lot about drowning or being swept away by the ocean. I feel the pool, waters over my head, reach my hand above the tide. This is reaffirmed later in the song with drowning in logistics. The semantic field of the ocean is used as an extended metaphor for insecurity. One can be swept away by its current, controlled by it or drowned by it. Tyler is consumed by his own insecurities as they are over his head and are pulling him. The ocean is also particularly destructive as well, which is similar to how insecurities can be harmful and volatile. More exclusively, the ocean has a talent for eroding that within its grasp or near to it, as we see with phenomena like coastal erosion. This behaviour of the ocean closely mimics the behaviour of insecurities. Slowly they erode away at your confidence until the foundations crumble. Therefore, we can assume that this extended metaphor is indeed used to talk about insecurity, given the similar nature and behaviour of the two. In addition to this, the second line, Tendencies on Repeat in it, features a common musical technique used in many of the pilots' songs. For those who do not know, a leitmotif is a tune that is associated with a character. If you had reservations about this song being about insecurities, this leitmotif acts as further proof. The low voice heard in this line Tendencies on repeat in it. is a leitmotif commonly associated with blurry face, the deep voice heard in stressed out or fairly local whenever he makes his appearance. Died in 2015, born in 2024, welcome back Blurryface from Stressed Out. You heard right, Blurryface makes his return in Backslide and as discussed in many interviews about what Blurryface represents, he is a manifestation of Tyler's insecurities. It is undoubtable then that this song delves into Tyler's insecurities, whether via the extended metaphor of the ocean representing the behaviour of insecurities or via the presence of Blurryface who represents such. Backslide also has a rather conversational structure, meaning there are moments where it seems as though Tyler is speaking to someone and occasions where they respond. Tyler is not just talking about his insecurities, but he is actively talking to them, talking to Blurryface. The pre-chorus features I don't care, you control me, leading me anywhere. The use of the second person pronoun of you humanises his insecurities, alluding to the presence of Blurryface. And taking this pre-chorus fully into consideration, it seems as though Tyler is admitting that his insecurities control him and often spur him to make decisions based on them. I'll take anything you have if you could throw me a line, further adds to this conversation Tyler is having with his insecurities. Again, it utilises that personification of you and the conversational structure associated with Blurryface. He will take any treatment from his insecurities. 
Meanwhile, throw me a line is a common idiom used to mean to help out in a difficult time. Tyler will take any treatment from his insecurities from blurry face as long as he is given a break by them. This depicts how much power Tyler's insecurities have over him, so much so that he is begging for some form of relief, relief that only they can provide. The title backslide in itself means to relapse into bad ways. This helps to illustrate how overwhelming the insecurities are that Tyler fears he will relapse into bad habits and almost begs against it with I don't want to backslide. Later on in the second verse, enjambment is used with thanks for asking in a way, but. Tyler is talking about the personal problems he has solved and yet the enjambment keeps the sentence flowing, showing how this is a cycle of insecurities and problems that are never ending, affirmed by the next line of accidentally uncovered a new one yesterday. There is no escape from his insecurities, they just keep appearing and growing. Finally, Backslide has quite an interesting rhyme scheme. Typically, a rhyme scheme is constricted to being between lines in a verse. Rap race, place to place, with no lace. However, the rhyme scheme also transcends the lines to rhyme in between verses. Rat Race rhymes with the beginning of verse 2, Bad Place, showing the strength of Tyler's insecurities and how they persist throughout the song. In fact, we get a glimpse of what these insecurities may be pertaining to. Tyler is insecure about the music he creates, fearing that he may disappoint us, the fans. A rat race is a way of life where people compete strongly for success, wealth or fame, which could be a reference to the competitive nature of the music industry and alludes to Tyler's way of life being to chase these concepts, insecure that his work is not enough. Bad place on a hundred dollar bass, kind of wishing that I never did Saturday, is a reference to the song Saturday in Scaled and Icy. Psy is an incredibly controversial album due to its more upbeat sound. At the time, many people disliked it as they felt it was trying to appeal to the mainstream or that Tyler was writing happier music that did not connect to the struggles of the people because he was in a better place himself. Tyler stating that he wished he never did Saturday highlights his insecurity in creating music due to the fear of disappointing fans, because Saturday was heavily criticised by both critics and fan base alike, so much so that Tyler later refers to it as a stain, something that is bad or imperfect. Paired with the reappearance of Blurry Face and the insecurity relating to the creation of music, Backslide acts as a reference to Stressed Out, especially when looking at that first verse of Stressed Out. Arguably, this adds another level to the line about Saturday and helps to reinforce that cycle of insecurity about music creation. Not only did Stressed Out talk about similar insecurities, showing that the cycle continues as insecurities about creating still exist, but Stressed Out was also heavily criticised for being too mainstream and therefore not liked by true fans of the band. I wish my mom would just admit she's sick of every word Overplayed, overstayed, it was a smash hit Funny how overplayed songs sound like crap I was talking too fast, I don't like the song But I hope they sing along, I hope they sing along this is a cycle Tyler will always go through, of worrying about his music not being good enough due to criticisms of the more popular songs produced, resulting in the growth of insecurity about his music and how it is perceived by his fans. Moreover, adding to this, in Christianity, backsliding is synonymous with falling away. This could potentially be a reference to the song Fall Away, which also has lyrics which can be interpreted as Tyler being insecure about his music, not wanting to disappoint, keeping the lights on this place. It's not unusual for songs to reiterate messages and struggles explored before. However, Backslide isn't merely just the rehashing of old ground that was explored in Stressed Out. It seems more like a response to Stressed Out, or a reflection, showing why these insecurities have persisted and grown more overwhelming. Rat Race can potentially refer to Tyler's own battles with his insecurity, how he is competing with them to win against them. This competitive nature against his insecurities is actually backed up later with Tyler calling himself a champion of a world you can't see, a champion being a victor or winner of sorts. And yet, a rat race is an unhealthy lifestyle, which potentially implies that Tyler's mechanisms of dealing with his insecurities are unhealthy. As a result, these insecurities have continued to exist. Much to my very British shock, 
Backslide also utilizes colloquialism or slang in the first two lines with wanna and in it. This usage of colloquialism presents Tyler as vulnerable, whilst the repetition implies that he cannot put up a facade to mask his insecurities as they have grown in power and strength. And yet this repetition also implies that he's trying again to mask things and failing. The next line, benefit from the shoe with no lace, take the seat with the crease in it, reinforces this idea of utilising failing mechanisms that Tyler is more familiar and comfortable with. A shoe with no lace is a slip-on shoe, easy to put on and far more comfortable than their laced counterpart. Similarly, a seat with a crease in it implies that the seat is worn, most likely loved and used quite a lot, and therefore comfortable. Both of these objects are things Tyler is familiar and comfortable with, and he would rather resort to using them or going back to them. However, slip-on shoes are notoriously unreliable, much like how a seat with a crease in it is unstable and can break at any moment. These things will not last long. Tyler is prioritizing picking familiar and easy objects to abate his growing insecurity rather than seeking a solution that is long-term. He keeps repeating these tendencies on picking the easy but temporary solution. I don't mind if it's lonely seems to be in response to Tyler picking temporary solutions. He doesn't mind the consequences of being lonely or things that are deemed fair as blurry face his insecurities are so strong that they lead him anywhere. He just wants his insecurities to be manageable so he doesn't backslide or relapse. Is that a stain you should change not only further highlights that Tyler's faulty coping mechanism is ignoring and masking things, as to change a stain means to cover it up and ignore it, but the usage of should, an imperative, in a conversational segment further helps to show that blurry face or these insecurities are in control and able to command Tyler on what to do. What I brushed under the rug, I used to be champion of a world you can't see again spells out that coping mechanism Tyler uses. He masks his insecurities, doesn't tell anyone, ignores them and pretends he is fine. Brushed under the rug being a common idiom for ignoring or hiding something. The use of the noun used implies that this method no longer works and that he's no longer in control of his internal world and thoughts. His insecurities cannot be covered up or hidden any longer. The final line of the second verse, now I'm drowning in logistics, again doubles down on these ideas of masking. Logistics are plans regarding the moving of things. This essentially implies that Tyler has to now expend the effort to plan how exactly he will cover up his insecurities. It doesn't come naturally anymore, so much so that the actual act of planning has overwhelmed him and become exhausting. Finally, I would like to add that, as I mentioned earlier, this song uses a lot more linguistic techniques to obscure its meaning in contrast to the blunt displays seen in next semester and overcompensate. This decision is, in my opinion, completely intentional, as it masks the notion of the song being about insecurities. It is yet another way Tyler is trying to hide his struggles and pretend everything is okay on an almost metatextual level. However, like all songs this era, such pessimistic messaging is balanced out with hints of a more hopeful tone. Specifically, this conversational structure is double-sided. Not only does it feature conversations with Blurry Face, but it also features conversations with a friend that act as encouragement to seek help and rely on others. Do you think that Now's the Time is yet another conversationally structured lyric? This could potentially be connected to the lyric above it, I should have loved you better, do you think that now's the time? Which is encouraging Tyler to potentially love himself or love another. Meanwhile, it could also be connected to the lyric below it. Do you think that now's the time you should let go? Which is encouraging Tyler to let go of his insecurities. Both interpretations ultimately encourage Tyler to get into more healthier behaviours rather than drown in his own insecurities and struggles. This concern for Tyler appears yet again in verse 2 with Are you doing good? Did you solve all of your problems? Unlike the beginning of the song, the final line ends on I don't want to backslide, potentially showing Tyler's conviction to not relapse after being encouraged by this friend to fight against his insecurities in a healthier way so that they disappear permanently. In essence, Backslide details the struggles that come from Tyler's insecurities regarding the creation of music, and how these struggles only grow when his original coping mechanisms start to fail, and yet it encourages the listener to reach out and 
seek a friend, rely on a friend when the going gets tough rather than let the insecurities consume. As aforementioned, this is yet another non-lore music video this era. Not only does this music video fail to continue from where we left off in Trench, with Tyler and Josh arriving back in Trench, but the music video takes place in a modern urban setting that contrasts the rugged nature of Trench and the brutalist architecture of Dima. The music video starts with Tyler buying bread from a store. Throughout the music video, he is riding on his bicycle through storms until he reaches Josh, who is preparing a barbecue. At this point, Tyler is out of bread, having given it up to someone or eaten it on the way, and therefore has to return back to the shop to start the journey all over again. It's a simple premise, and yet, much like the lyrics, the music video is jam-packed with symbolism, metaphors, and even easter eggs to past songs. The first thing of note in this music video is arguably the most important thing to understanding this music video, the storm. In the music video, this often appears during the chorus and makes Tyler's journey ten times harder. In the end, we even find that it is soaked through the burger buns he has bought, resulting in him needing to return to the shop. This storm could potentially be a reference to the migraine lyrics, where mental health struggles are presented as stormy weather, thunderstorms, cloud snow, and a slight drizzle. What is quite interesting is that the storm, the struggle, appears after the camera zoom in on cherry blossom trees. These are a symbol of life, and of spring itself, which in essence represents hope for the future. In contrast, the stormy segments we see Tyler in, judging by the weathered leaves that fly all around him, are meant to actually reflect the season of autumn. Autumn symbolises adulthood and maturity. Tyler is not seen struggling in the spring or even enjoying it. He is constantly tormented only by the segments of the stormy autumn season. This seems to imply that Tyler's struggles have continued in his adulthood, rather than him being reborn by maturity and the new perspective on life. He isn't able to move past his struggles, much unlike the cherry blossoms that symbolise rebirth. He has not gone through that rebirth of the self, stuck in a cycle. Moreover, these struggles are born from insecurity, as the rain and the storm links to the consistent mention of waters and oceans in the lyrics. This could essentially make the journey Tyler goes through a metaphor about the journey of mental health, or even life. The second most important thing to understand is, believe it or not, Ned's Bread, the hamburger buns Tyler buys at the store at the beginning of the music video. Ignoring the actual product itself for a minute, Ned is the creature that appears in the chlorine music video and the outside music video. He is a representation of Tyler's creativity, and so, every time Tyler eats a bun or gives it away, he is consuming or giving away his creativity to others. This creativity is used to stabilise the meat of the burger, which Josh provides. Personally, I interpret this as being the music itself. A song can't exist without a beat, and 21 Pilots arguably cannot exist without Josh and the vital input he has. Tyler provides the creativity and the ideas. Josh helps to make these ideas something substantial, make them reality. At the end of the music video, the storm has weathered the last remaining burger bun. This could imply that Tyler's insecurities over what he creates destroy any form of creativity he deems not to be good enough or perfect enough, resulting in the need to go back and get something more suitable that will create the perfect song. This, again, could imply that the journey we see Tyler go on isn't just one of dealing with personal struggles, but also how these struggles and insecurities intervene with Tyler's process of making music. The shop storefront, both seen at the beginning and the end, features an array of easter eggs to past songs and the lore. For example, there is a sign in the shop window which has a tally of nine and the name Bishops, referring to the nine bishops of Dima. There is also a Dangerous Ben symbol on the bin, whilst the shop itself features the familiar FPE acronym that appears at least once every era this time appearing as food, petrol, etc. There is also a sign with Ned on it, as well as a sign saying Jim Dunn's Bubblegum, not only a reference to Josh's dog, but also a reference to the Choker MV, wherein Josh wore a t-shirt with a similar font. Out of these three easter eggs, I would like to point out the presence of the FPE slogan. This is not the first time we have seen FPE used as food, petrol, etc. It was actually first seen in the Psy era in the official Psy livestream. 
particularly it was on for the set for Mulberry Street. The Psy era was meant to be happy and pop in sound to match the themes of propaganda and censorship. Not only that, but many people have taken Dima in the Psy era to be a representation of the music industry and consumerism, with the bright colours, advertisements that encourage you to buy into a product, etc. This detail becomes interesting when you realise Tyler is buying his creativity from a store that references the Psy livestream which could potentially imply Tyler's creativity has become a commodity, or he feels that it has to be something that is perfect for anyone that picks it up, rather than being something for his own personal use. This contrasts the lemonade Tyler buys later. Not only is this lemonade a reference to chlorine being in the same colour cup Tyler gives to Ned, but making lemonade has also been used before by Tyler to be a metaphor for making music. Back in the Level of Concern mini era, Tyler referred to making music as making lemonade. This creativity is natural, something he has created himself and taken from his own experiences, proven by the presence of a younger Tyler, rather than something he is bought into, something that has become a product that needs to be perfect for use for everyone. This reinforces ideas of Tyler being insecure about his music. His creativity has to be something that everyone will like, that everyone will feel satisfied by and continue buying into, rather than something that helps him personally. It adds to what we've already discussed about creativity becoming tainted by his struggles and insecurities regarding how people perceive what he creates, but it is clear that the struggles do not just appear during the storm. They've always been there in the form of a shop that represents these demands of perfection from a fan base about the product that Tyler puts out. I would also like to draw your attention to the dangerous bend symbol, which is a reference to overcompensate. As established in the analysis about overcompensate, the dangerous bend symbol has two meanings. It's firstly used on roads to signify a dangerous journey ahead. Secondly, it was used by the Wabaki group, the creators of the symbol, to mark difficult passages of their work that could potentially be interpreted wrong by the reader, resulting in a completely different understanding of the reality of the argument or the truth. In the music video, it acts as a warning to Tyler. The path ahead is difficult as we see him ride through intense storms or through his own personal struggles and insecurities but it also mirrors the lyrics that criticise Tyler's flimsy coping mechanisms to deal with his insecurities short term, implying that the way in which Tyler is dealing with his struggles is an incorrect interpretation on how to deal with things, not reflecting the reality of the problem itself. It's also worth mentioning about Tyler's bike. Much like what is seen with the lyrics, the music video is one large reference to Stressed Out, with Tyler riding down the streets in his bicycle, much akin to him and Josh riding the trikes? I, I don't know what they're called down the road. The bike on itself not only acts as a reference, but also acts as a response to Stressed Out. In Stressed Out, the trikes have three wheels. Not only does this seem to reflect a more childish and immature time, but the three wheels make the bike stable. It represents the stability of childhood, not tainted by the struggles of adulthood. In contrast, Backside features a sleek bicycle with two wheels which not only shows the maturity of Tyler now fully in his adulthood, but it exposes the instability of his adult life when facing these struggles as well. He doesn't have those stabilizers to make the journey easier. Finally, it kind of feels like I have to add an obligatory section of one of these now at the end of every video, but we have yet another music video featuring the representation of cycles. So I guess I'm taking another shot. Firstly, the music video is cyclical, meaning that it ends where it begins to create one flowing loop. This one is a bit more obvious, but he's also riding a bicycle, which is commonly associated with cycles. Moreover, the music video features the cycle of seasons between spring and autumn. Whilst this can, again, reference the cycle of struggles Tyler is going through, it's yet another nod to the story of this album ending in a repeat of the cycle. Ultimately, the events of Backslide metaphorically represent the struggles that insecurities create, the cycle of insecurities. It also focuses on how Tyler's insecurities regarding creating music and not wanting to disappoint may taint Tyler's creative process when making music, resulting in him going back and forth from the shops until he finds something that he likes enough, something that endures his harsh insecurities to give to Josh to create the perfect song something that everyone will like.
Um, I don't have much to say. I hope this analysis made sense because to me it feels really, really messy because there's a ton of ideas being thrown around. Um, but I hope you enjoyed watching this and thanks for watching Top Debate.